It's been nearly a year since China stunned the Pentagon and the world by conducting a hypersonic light vehicle test that traveled around the world and landed just a few dozen miles from its intended landing site. In this video, we'll take a look at whether the US can catch China's hypersonic missiles. Curious to know? Let's find out! Some Pentagon officials referred to it as a Sputnik moment because the Chinese outpaced the US with a technology that could evade billions of dollars in missile defense, sparking an arms race. The significance was that it scared the hell out of everyone, said Senator Angus King, according to Fox News. If the thing is over Kansas City, you're talking about cutting 15 to 20 minutes down to 2 to 3 minutes. That is a significant improvement. Hypersonic weapons travel at least Mach 5, are highly maneuverable, can change course during flight, and can fly 100 feet above the ocean undetected. Senator King, who chairs the Senate Armed Services Subcommittee on Strategic Forces, told Fox News in an exclusive interview that the US continues to lag behind its adversaries. The senator from Maine attributes this to the US fear of failure, which distinguishes it from adversaries such as China. I think we're probably five years behind where the Chinese are, King said. They don't mind failing exams. We have this idea that we have to get everything just right and that every test has to be a success. They have a string of failures from which they have learned something. In nearly every public hearing, King has asked the Pentagon why it isn't investing more in hypersonic technology. To be honest, the Chinese and Russians simply got ahead of us, King said. We're in trouble if our Pacific strategy is based on aircraft carriers. And an aircraft carrier is vulnerable to a 6,000 mile per hour missile. In June, the United States announced the failure of a weapons test. The Pentagon announced that a full hypersonic system for a common hypersonic glide body atop a two-stage missile booster failed to detach and reach Mach 5 speeds at a testing site at the Pacific Missile Range facility in Hawaii. According to the Missile Defense Agency, a ground-based interceptor missile launched from Vandenberg Air Force Base on Friday was supposed to hit its target, a missile launched 4,000 miles away from the Kwajalein Atoll. However, the interceptor failed to hit its target. Officials will try to figure out what caused any anomalies that prevented a successful intercept. The Pentagon said in a statement that program officials will conduct an extensive review to determine the cause or causes of any anomalies that may have prevented a successful intercept. The interceptor is one of about 30 that have been deployed in Alaska and at Vandenberg, as part of a missile defense program that began in 2004. The Pentagon announced in March that it will spend $1 billion to station 14 more interceptors in Alaska. The military stated that it is reacting to North Korean nuclear progress. According to Reuters, the United States currently has 26 interceptors stationed at Fort Greeley in Alaska and four at Vandenberg Air Force Base. The weapon is a sensor-filled package that destroys the incoming target with kinetic energy from a direct hit. It was the missile defense program's second test at Vandenberg this year and the system's first since flight testing was halted following a failed intercept in December 2010. The January test did not include a target, but rather a series of pre-planned maneuvers. However, just days after the failed test announcement, the Pentagon made a point of announcing two recent successful hypersonic tests on Tuesday. In May, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency conducted the first flight test of a ground-based hypersonic boost glide system launched from a standard military truck at the White Sands Missile Facility in New Mexico. Recently, the Air Force successfully tested a hypersonic missile that could be launched from under the wing of a B-52 strategic jet bomber off the coast of Southern California. Last week, Russian scientists mocked the failed U.S. hypersonic glide vehicle test, claiming that the U.S. design model for hypersonic weapons is too complex. In the new defense bill, Congress is asking for $292 million to fund more hypersonic research and development. Senator King compares hypersonic weapons to the introduction of the longbow, which helped the British defeat the French at the Battle of Agincourt in 1415 when they were outmanned, and the stirrup which allowed Genghis Khan's soldiers to steady their shot from atop a horse. Technological advances frequently determine the outcome of conflict, King said. And hypersonics, in my opinion, 
are the game-changing strategic difference in any future conflict in which this country finds itself, and we're falling behind. John Plumb, the first Assistant Secretary of Defense for Space Policy, agreed during a confirmation hearing earlier this year. In response to Senator King in January, Plumb stated, It certainly appears that we are behind. In November, outgoing Joint Chiefs Vice Chairman General John Hyten was the first to warn that the United States was losing the hypersonic race. Recognizing the threat these weapons pose, the United States military has resorted to using hot air balloons as an early warning system to protect the country from hypersonic weapons that can now evade U.S. missile defense systems. In next year's defense budget, Congress has requested $27.1 million for this balloon defense. Pentagon officials have publicly refuted the narrative that the U.S. has fallen behind, pointing out that the vast majority of the country's ballistic missiles and nuclear arsenal are already hypersonic, meaning they fly five times faster than the speed of sound. During a press conference in November, Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin was asked if the Chinese hypersonic test was a Sputnik moment. Well, those aren't terms I'd use, Austin replied. Austin bristled when asked why the Chinese had been able to field a medium-range hypersonic weapon while the U.S. had not. I'm not sure if they fielded those weapons, but they're testing them, Austin said. China is the Pentagon's number one priority, and the U.S. is watching Beijing very carefully to ensure America's security. Defense Secretary Mark Esper has said since his confirmation as Pentagon chief in July. According to Esper, China has committed the greatest theft of intellectual property in human history and is also expanding its military to push the U.S. out of theater. The Congressional Budget Office has issued a bleak update to its economic forecast for the next decade on Wednesday, predicting average annual national deficits of $1.2 trillion through 2029 owing in large part to recent budget and border security bills. According to the CBO report, one of the many consequences of free spending policies is that public debt will reach unprecedented heights, nearly equaling the nation's GDP, its highest level since shortly after World War II, according to the report. Growth in the GDP is also expected to slow in the coming years. Washington Governor Jay Inslee announced Wednesday night that he is withdrawing from the 2020 presidential race, claiming that it has become clear that he does not have a chance of winning the party's nomination. The environmental activist had urged the Democratic National Committee to hold a debate solely about climate change, but she did not meet the polling thresholds required to participate. On MSNBC, Inslee announced his decision, stating that it has become clear that he will not win. He has not ruled out running for a third term as governor, but has not stated what his next steps will be. According to reports, Inslee will announce his candidacy for a third term on Thursday. North Carolina Democratic Governor Roy Cooper vetoed a proposal on Wednesday that would have made it mandatory for state and local law enforcement to comply with the Tainer request from U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement. Republicans blasted Cooper accusing him of putting illegal immigrants' interests ahead of basic public safety. Under the plan, sheriff's offices and other law enforcement agencies would have been required to hold illegal immigrant detainees until ICE personnel arrived to retrieve them. Those who did not comply with the request would have been fired, according to the Wall Street Journal. Bill Maher, the host of HBO's Real Time, mocked Representative Rashida Tlaib on Wednesday saying the freshman congresswoman was childish after she called for a boycott of his TV show. Some people only have one option. Boycott. Cancel. Make go away. Mar tweeted, apparently echoing toddler phrases. But here's the thing. The House voted 318-17 to 17 to condemn the hashtag BDS movement, with 93% of Democrats voting yes. Is Tlaib planning to boycott 93% of her constituents? Party? Mars' tweet appeared to refer to a July vote in which the House passed a resolution opposing the boycott, divestment, and sanctions movement against Israel.